What is the oddest item you've ever eaten? Was that the thing you had the audacity to eat in kindergarten? Or were you on a trip when you determined that monkey would be the ideal cuisine for you? I like to try new things, and to be honest, not all of them go down well. Of course, because I don't eat any non-poultry meat, I get a pass on many of these, but that doesn't mean I haven't had my fair share of disgusting stuff. In Paris, I stopped at a Greek-run diner, and because no one could understand one another, we all started playing Let's Eat That Thing. Suffice to say, the last round's small gelatinous cube wasn't exactly wonderful. It tasted like a honeybee had a one-night fling with a gummy bear. It was trapped in my teeth, and I had to swallow it out of politeness. No! Okay, so that was revolting. Still, I'm glad I didn't get any of the items I'm about to list. Number seven, gooey ducks. I'll start our short journey off on a light note with some seafood. Gooey ducks are unusual creatures that dig in the sand at the bottom of shallow ocean waves. They grow vertically like plants, up to six feet tall, so that their mouths can reach the sand's surface and eat. Nothing out of the ordinary, and I'm sure gooey ducks taste delicious, but there's something about them. Perhaps it's the name, Mushy Duck. That does not sound really delicious. Perhaps it's the fact that they appear to be censored by a large black box. I'm not sure. Number six, bushmeat. Although most bushmeat is legally illegal, it supports a vast population in Africa, where hunters go out into the jungles, shoot something delectable, and bring it home for dinner. It appears simple enough, but what if they accidentally shoot a monkey or a chimp? Could you eat something resembling a small hairy infant with fingers and toes? Number five, cobra heart. You could be too good for rats. Perhaps you wish to eat a hazardous and revered animal. What about a cobra's still beating heart? In Vietnam, cobras are held. Their hearts are taken with a knife while they are still alive, and the heart is presented to customers in a shot glass of cobra blood and vodka while they are still beating. Tops off. This is for the genuinely obstinate and those who have little faith in humane slaughter methods. On the bright side, according to local legend, you can get many of the snake's great characteristics by doing so. And it's not a wasted practice because the rest of the snake is grilled and eaten with lemongrass. It's also an aphrodisiac, but what bad cuisine is it? Duck that's ooey gooey? That's not the case. Number four, animal wines. So perhaps you'd prefer to consume a cobra in the form of vodka. This isn't a problem. It's a rather regular practice in areas of Asia. A cobra or another animal is captured, killed, and then imprisoned in an alcohol bottle for at least a year. It will get you drunk off your ass while also tasting like you just licked a pet shop at this point. Don't be surprised if you come across something other than cobras. Everything can be converted into wine. Squirrels, bears, and baby mice, to mention a few. In fact, according to Chinese medicine, baby mice wine is good for everything. All you need are a few baby mice that are no more than three days old and a bottle of rice moonshine. Drown the rice in moonshine and then sit back and wait for their magical abilities to manifest. It's simple. Number three, worm cheese. Okay, enough with the strange meats. Now for some strange cheese. Worm cheese is something that happens by chance in Italy and is theoretically prohibited to sell. Nonetheless, it sells for a considerable price on the illegal market. Worm cheese is popular, and it goes well with crackers. So what exactly is worm cheese? Worm cheese is normal cheese prepared by good old Italian farmers who first put the cheese in a round mold to make a wheel, and then let it sit and cure on a shelf before serving. This usually takes some time, and one of the cheese wheels will occasionally crack. Flies lay their eggs within the soft inside, and baby flies, commonly known as maggots, begin wiggling out and eating it a few days later. Meanwhile, their saliva softens the cheese even more, and they begin to vomit anything they've consumed. Because of the chemistry involved in this procedure, the cheese is incredibly soft and simple to spread. When you get the cheese, the goal isn't to eat around the maggots, but to consume everything while it's still writhing. Delicious. Number two, head cheese. Life as a peasant is difficult. You get pretty terrible cuts of meat when you buy beef. So, what should one do if all they have is the head of a cow, sheep, or pig? Make some head cheese. Head cheese is a meat jelly formed of all the bits of the animal's head that no one likes to eat. Feet are sometimes added as well. It's similar to combining the texture of jello with the flavors of a hot dog and then eating it cold on your next sandwich. Scrumptious. Iranians have a unique application for sheep and goat heads. 
They produce kale posh, a traditional dish made from the head of a sheep or goat, together with the hooves and stomach, that is boiled in spices to get rid of the smell of filthy feet. Number one, Rocky Mountain Oysters. What about some good old fashioned cow nads? Since we're on the subject of unappealing cuts, who hasn't glanced at a bowl and thought to themselves, those dangly bits seem delectable. I'd like to sample some. Of course, it will have to be deep fried and presented on a large platter because that is the American way of making anything delicious edible. Catch up? Well guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching.